My personal limit for a boat I can single hand is about 42 feet. Now that's big and roomy and comfortable enough as it can be to safely operate it without help. And a lot of people agree with me, 42 feet seems to be the magic number. The business of deciding what you can and can't handle though is basically done at the dock. Can you maneuver it in a tight marina? Can you pull it up to a small little fuel dock? And most importantly, can you back it out of a tight slip with no one on the bow sort of fending off when the wind catches the sides of the hull? There's really only one time that size of boat matters. It's at the dock. Once you're at sea, the boat might as well be a hundred feet long because it really doesn't matter anymore. You're out at sea. Um, same as once you're at anchor. You might be glad you bought a 40 footer for those sketchy moments in the marina with the crosswind. But once you get out there, you'll kind of be wishing you'd bought the bigger boat. This week on everything you need to know, the best 45 foot sailboat. Forty-five or so footers are kind of all the rage in the Caribbean for couples to sort of retire on and sail the tropics. And for good reason, they give you a good level of space and comfort without being so big that they're impossible to own without a whole team of people helping to take care of it. And the selection is almost endless, as is the places that you can take these things. And within just about any budget, I found a nice selection of boats that we're going to start looking at today. We're going to start at about 200 grand and work our way down. So if you need something cheaper, stay with me to the end. Bear in mind, however, though, that as the boats get cheaper, they tend to get older. So if you're not going to spend 200 grand up front, you have to be willing to do the work. It's going to be a lot harder to sort of get it ready. The elbow grease, the research, things like that. You're going to have to be more of a skilled boat owner and own some basic tools. Now, first up, and likely the nicest boat we're going to see today, in my opinion, is this Saga 43. Now, Saga is a name that you don't hear all that much, but believe me, these 43s have a whole lot of pedigree, even if you haven't heard of them. Saga was founded in Ontario, Canada, here, where I live, uh, in 1995. And not to mess around as a new company, they immediately hired one of the best designers in the world so they could get cracking on making some really good sailboats. Robert Perry dreamed up this elegant performance cruiser and one heck of a boat came from it. Mr. Perry was quoted as saying that this boat is designed to be a legitimately fast cruiser that would combine elements from the racing trends of the time with a long waterline which increases speed and interior volume. He said most cruisers are, are sort of designed from the inside out but not here, not with the 43, he said. We want to appeal to an owner that knows performance. To give you an idea of that performance, um, racer Dwight Odom, he's a, a big deal in the racing world, he took out the 43 on the West Coast in 35 to 40 knot winds and hit speeds of 14 knots on the downwind with a reefed male mainsail and a full headsail. This is one hell of a boat. Not to be outdone by that performance, the interior of this boat is actually very elegant and extremely well thought out, as Perry boats always are. This is a two-cabin layout, which is the one that you want, and they are properly two private staterooms with a reasonable living area in the middle. And you'll notice that this isn't like the Benz and Jens inside either, it's not a Hunter. It's skinnier, it's a little bit tighter, but that's because of its performance nature. She's going to be a much more capable in sea kindly boat for it. So while you don't have this cavernous production style interior, you still get lots of usable space and the boat is better for it. This boat should appeal to those of you who want the island hopping comfort, but also the ability to really truly sail this boat and strive for every additional knot or half knot or quarter knot of boat speed along your way. All the while, you still get a full-on live aboard with your aft cabin and your sugar scoop and a huge arch on the back for the dinghy and solar panels and a wind generator and radar. This is one heck of a near 45 footer for the sailors that are pure of heart and I love it. Okay, but what if you aren't interested in all that performance? We always say that cruising is about 5% actually sailing from tropical paradise to tropical paradise and 95% of the time you're just living 
on a boat. You sleep there. You make breakfast there. You get some work done. You go snorkeling off the back of the boat. You entertain guests. Now, you might spend weeks on end in a beautiful location, and you want a boat more focused on that sort of behavior. This, then, is the polar opposite of that saga we just looked at. This is a Hunter 45 DS. Now, the DS here stands for Deck Saloon, which a purist will tell you this boat is not. But it is one of the most interesting ones that sort of designed on that layout concept. For 189 grand here, we get some creature comforts, like we get a furling mainsail, which is a very nice to have on a cruising boat where, you know, the roach and the size and the shape of the sail don't matter all that much. We get a tidy deck layout with, of course, everything led aft where it should be. And we get a massive sugar scoop that Hunter is, of course, known for. It's inside where this floating condo is going to sell its potential buyers. There's this two stateroom layout, which again is what you want, with two heads, and interior volume is what Hunter does best. Sadly, however, in these pictures, the boat is on the hard, so you can't really get a good idea or a sense of how much light really comes in these windows. There's a cover over the boat in these pictures, but these are so bright and airy. These cabins are just amazing, believe me. In this 45-foot Hunter, it gives us a dedicated nav desk with a huge C-shaped settee across from a very comfortable-looking bench. This looks like a great place to hang out. And we get a huge galley, of course, because that's what Hunter does, with tons of counter space and room to really get into cooking if you're so inclined. Up front, of course, ahead of the main saloon, we get a Pullman berth, and a lot of people like that layout. It's private too, because you can shut the door behind you and you have your own little space in here. And when duty calls, you have a private head just forward of this. Now this boat looks to be in very good shape with everything looking very clean and well kept. I'm impressed. However, sadly, the owners failed to take any pictures of the aft cabin, which is kind of the sweet spot for one of these boats, kind of a failing point in this ad. The 45DS is a fairly impressive boat that brings the comfort and luxury of sort of a downtown apartment to the would-be sailor, and they do it in a hull that still manages to be fast enough. This particular hull will sail to weather, but not really efficiently. It likes to be off the wind at about 55 degrees for its maximum ability to really shine. This boat is also a shoal draft, as most of these hunters are, because they're designed to sail well to the destination, but truly, they're designed to spread their wings once you arrive. Because of that shoal draft, you'll be getting into the skinnier anchorages where other people can't go, and then it'll be giving you the lap of luxury once you get the hook down. Lady K Sailing is brought to you by patrons, people who give a couple of dollars an episode to make these videos possible. I definitely couldn't do it without you. A big shout out to all the existing patrons who have gotten us this far. If you get value from these videos or you want to help out, please consider becoming a patron. As the prices come down on our list today, the age of the boats, of course, goes up. But don't sleep on this next boat. This is an absolute battle axe with a factory weight of 32,000 blue water pounds. And this is a Hardin 45. And this is a beast. Hardened boats were made in Taiwan, where many of our favorite blue water boats come from. And if you research the 45, you'll find story after story after story of owners who have sailed them literally everywhere, from the West Coast, Alaska and Hawaii, to South America, and then through a little ditch down there and onward to the Caribbean, across to the Med, most of Europe, and of course, back to Asia where they were built. This classic catch is a thing to behold with her beautiful bowsprit, butterfly hatch, beautiful teak work, and in this case, complemented by some modern touches like the newer dinghy davits and the solar panels on the backside. The Hardin 45 is made famous by many a cruising legends. For example, after nine circumnavigations, some 38,000 miles, Gordon and Joan Mary are quoted as saying, it isn't fast for a boat, but she's pretty quick for a house. This particular 45 is adorned on the cover of a couple of cruising guides too. Inside, of course, there is no mistake. We are in a Taiwanese boat here by the way of the forest of teak that's both strong and beautiful, though it is something that will be a labor of love for the owner. It's maintenance. This boat is as classic as you can get right down to the wooden wheel at the helm, but she has been updated over the years. If you want something that's already proven time and time again that she can cross oceans safely and with style, 
more times than just about any other boat has, this might be the boat for you. Of course, with this age though, you'll need a solid survey, and the price they're asking is 135, so you'll probably need a little bit of a slush fund to bring the boat up to snuff, and from the looks of it though, it won't take all that much. I'd also add a more modern solar system and maybe some wind generation, but this is a great place to start. Next up is a boat we don't talk much about around here, and that's not been entirely fair. I've heard it said, I haven't said it, maybe I've said it, I've heard it said, friends don't let friends buy Irwins. And while that's kind of funny, it may not be an entirely fair statement. I have heard of some Irwins of poor construction, um, it, a few of them, but that can be said for any brand. This is an Irwin 43 doing what Irwin is known for, the center cockpit design. It's a simple, heavy blue water cruiser. This is the Mark III too. It's 26,000 pounds, so a fairly heavy displacement boat for sure, but also a shallow draft because when they made this thing, they knew you were gonna take it to the Bahamas. These owners have already kitted it out properly too. They've got solar and radar. They've got a full enclosure to turn that already safe and comfortable center cockpit into a whole extra living room on this boat, which is awesome, especially when those Caribbean squalls kick up midday and you wanna stay dry. And believe me, they kick up midday every single day. Inside an Irwin CC, is its party piece, that aft stateroom with its walk around bed. This is something that we don't see enough unless you're looking at a big plastic hunter. But in Irwin, they nailed it with this design and this was in the 80s. It's a comfortable and private stateroom that makes all the difference when you live on a boat, when you live at sea. Having your own private space is a game changer. In the middle bit, we get a nice sized saloon with room to entertain for a little dinner party. And we already have a nice TV on the bulkhead for movie nights beside the keel step mast that someone has thoughtfully made a sunbrella wrap for. I love this. If you've ever wandered through the boat in the middle of the night and bump into the ice cold mast, it's uncomfortable. I like it when they wrap them with this stuff. The interior of these was specifically designed to be lived at for extended periods of time with a full nav station down the couple of steps forward in a small but very usable galley toward the back on starboard with an actual more conventional RV style of fridge with the freezer. You get a lot of space here too in a proven boat that is very popular to this day despite it being from the 80s. Everything on this particular boat looks super clean and well-maintained too. There's the picture of the, uh, the engine with generator and it looks like you can honestly eat in there. It's beautiful. For the $124,000 asking price, it's hard to see a downside to the boat. This is kind of a huge deal because you and your spouse could make an offer and provided it passes a survey, which it looks like it would welcome the scrutiny, and then you could just point the bow south and go. It's already outfitted, it's all there. It's clean and tidy and ready for its next adventure. I honestly don't see this boat still being for sale by the time you see this video. What a catch this is for a sloop. Before we get to our last boat today, I get asked a lot for help from people who are boat shopping right now. So I dedicated a page over at ladykaysailing.com where you can go to book an hour of my time if you need me. It's ladykaysailing.com forward slash consults. And speaking of a good catch, we have one heck of a catch, pun intended. This is the timeless and extremely sought after Hans Christian 43. And believe me, this is a nice boat. This is similar to what I stayed on in Annapolis last October. And I got to captain around the Chesapeake, which was an amazing opportunity. A huge thank you to the owner of that boat. You know who you are. They absolutely freight train with the canvas up. These Hans Christians are like nothing else. But you had better like Teak because this drop dead gorgeous double ender is riddled with it. You could spend a week just admiring the beautiful woodwork and then a month oiling it, but it's worth it. This is the kind of boat that people slow down as they go by just to take it all in. But with all that wood, they didn't skimp on the heavy stuff either. You get a whole 32,000 pounds of weight to smash your way through to whatever Caribbean island you might be headed for. And you can be sure that they'll get there because one of these has already been there. I promise. For the 80 grand, all they want is 80 grand for this thing. 
Um, this boat is immaculate and beautiful, and a lot of money's already actually been spent here. We get a self-steering wind vane on the back. That's five grand. We get radar. We get dinghy davits. We get modern Lumar self-tailers and a modern rig. This boat was made in the 90s, after all. Well, it doesn't look it. This is a boat with a huge sail plan, too, by way of the massive bowsprit and the catch rig with a factory whisker pole attached. So you just need to, if you need to make a thousand miles out in the ocean at any given time, this boat is ready to do it. You just set all the sails, tune in the self-steering, and 120, 140 mile days, easy peasy, if not even more. I think the 80 grand for this boat is a steal. If you had another 20 grand especially to throw at it after you buy it, you'll never need another boat. You will want for nothing. It would be the ultimate in timeless classic with all the modern amenities that you would want to stay comfortable. Is there a better thing to do with 100 grand? I really don't think so. What would you buy for a 45 foot boat? Did we miss something that you like? Leave a comment below. I look forward to hearing from you. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. It's free for you and it would really mean the world to me. If you want to keep this conversation going, we have an amazing community over on the Lady K Discord channel. It's free and it's just a bunch of sailors talking about sailboats, as you do every time you meet another sailor. I'll leave a link below. I hope to see you there. Until next week, guys, keep the heavy side down, but not too far down. See ya.